Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to present the drug combination challenge. Uh, no, drug, yes, the drug combination project based on the data set provided by the AstraZeneca Sanger drug combination challenge a few years ago. So, so first, uh, why predicting, uh, why, why working on drug combination? Because first, it's easier to develop than new drugs from scratch. We all know how expensive it is to develop new drugs. Uh, also, to lower dose to reduce toxicity because if there is a synergy, so we don't need to use it such a high dose. And also, it's it's because tumor cell escape inhibition through rely on our alternative pathway. So we had to target more than one pathway anyway. So that's why we need smart drug combination approach to control proliferation. And there are different ways to target, um, to design drug combination. For, for, for instance, we can target this, uh, in one within the same pathway. For instance, in melanoma, we can target BRAF and downstream MEK. It's like a strong hit in the um, same pathway. Or we can target different pathway. Uh, for instance, in breast cancer, we can also um, target ARC and AKT. And what we learned so far from the dream challenge based on the, regarding on the drug combination uh, subject, uh, in the first drug combination challenge, NCI dream drug sensitivity prediction challenge. So the overall idea is that the similarity and dissimilarity in compound activity leads to synergy. That's one of the main findings in this challenge. And in the most recent one uh, from AstraZeneca, the one is based, uh, this project is based on, and the best performer used the random forest and the protein protein interaction network. And also they, were, they found that resistance biomarker were also predictive of synergy. And overall the idea, so to keep in mind that the synergy, it's not just about the chemical structures, but also highly context dependent. And here the context mean the cancer type or the cell lineage. And also that synergy, we we'll all learn that synergy prediction on new entities is often just slightly better than random. So what, what do I mean by new entities, for instance, for new drugs or new cell line, not for existing, like in, in putting in value. So yeah, it's very difficult to predict on new entities. And here's an overview of the talk. First, I'm going to talk about the general application of our matrix factorization in pharmacogenomics. And then the second time I will talk, the, the main talk is about the more hypothesis driven drug synergy discovery. And this project uh, also use m machine learning, but in a different way. So, so we want to know for a given pair of drugs, the likelihood to be synergistic. And then the second time for a given synergistic drug combination, in which cases it will work better, it will be more, most, more effective than others. And the data set we use, uh, first we use the, the genomic of drug sensitivity in cancer data set GDSC, where we have 1,000 cell lines, all each treated by 265 drugs, and with different uh, omics layer, yeah, like gene expression, copy name prevention, methylation, mutations. And then for the dream uh, data, we have 85 cell lines that are um, also part of the first data set. And then they provided more than 900 drug combinations. So yes, this was the data set. So overall, what was done in the, this type of pharmacogenomics data set is that, for instance, for each drug, we know for which gene can be predictive of this drug's uh, uh, sensitivity. So the problem is that's what is done so far. And the, the problem is, for instance, what if the drug is no longer exist? And also, in which pathway does this gene belong to? And also, mutations. Sometimes mutation can be pre predictive of drug sensitivity, but what if in a certain tissue type, tissue type, we don't see this mutation? So that's why we need more general insight. And what we did differently uh, in this project, for instance, is that we use matrix factorization to predict drug response. Uh, here we have the, the matrix of drug response, uh, IC50 inhibition of 50% of the, of the cells. In the rows, we have the drugs, in, in the column, the cell line. So uh, the matrix is factored by two latent matrices, and, and, both, uh, and in case we have uh, 
side information or additional information about the cell line side, we can add, for instance, gene expression data, mutation data, and also we were, were sampling also a link matrix to factorize this. And same for the drug. In, in drug, if we have descriptor of the drug, for instance, protein targets, or our, our, our chemical structure, we can also factorize this to add the, this information. So, and well, wh why are we doing this? Because we, we using matrix factorization, we can find, we can put the, um, the drug sensitivity as a, as a product of the feature of the drug by a link, uh, by an interaction matrix, and then by the feature of the cell line. And the most interesting things in, in this method is this interaction matrix so that Basically, it's a sort of interaction between the feature of the drugs and the feature of the cell line, which answers this, this, this certain type of questions, such as what, what kind of drug uh, works on what kind of cell line. It's like in a real world scenario, for instance, what kind of person likes to watch what kind of movie. This is just an uh, analogy. And here we can, we can put the drug sensitivity drug sensitivity uh, as a sort of uh, weighted sum of, the, of all the drug features multiplied by uh, the cell line feature. And this, uh, this weight is actually the interaction matrix. So uh, how, how do we interpret this? We interpret, for instance, that uh, active, if we use pathway activity for this descriptor of the cell line, we can interpret in a way that activation of pathway X uh, when targeting protein Y is associated with drug sensitivity, increased sensitivity. And if there is a causality, we might be able to say that uh, activation of this pathway confers sensitivity to any drugs targeting this specific protein. And yes, that's the, the good thing is that in case of top hits, there are often uh, causality. And this, and with this, we can answer a simple question is that under which condition which pathway status targeting a specific protein has an effect on killing the cells. So, and so here we're we, we going to present, now we're going to talk about the pathway activity. What kind of pathway activity we're using? We use Progeny. It's a sort of data-driven pathway scores derived from the downstream perturbation. We give, um, we perturb the, the system and then we look at the gene expression changes uh, of the downstream uh, genes. So, so that's how we derive the progeny scores. And it's a small set of cancer relevant pathways. And each pathway, if in, in terms of a drug response prediction, each pathway is more predictive, more informative than the corresponding one if you compare to other gene set method. And it's quite easy to use. We, we just need to, to use the gene expression data, multiply by weight matrix, and we got the pathway scores. So it's quite easy to use. So now let's Take an example of this interaction matrix. How do we interpret this interaction? For instance, in, in melanoma, we have here the, the, um, the pathway activity, for instance, here on the, the column, and on the row, the drug targets. So that's the, the, the interaction between the feature of the drugs with the feature of the cell line. And we can see very clearly there's a top hit here uh, with BRAF interacting with MAPK, so this is obvious. We know that BRAF activate MAPK. And the, and the funny thing is that this strong association is only found in skin tissue. And it's also proven that it, it works pretty well in these cases. And for instance, not really well in, in another tissue. And another top hit is this one, is BRAF and, and VEGF. So how to interpret this? So like before, we, we, we interpret in the sense that targeting BRAF and when VEGF is activated, is correlated with the resistance. So a very obvious uh, thing when, when you see this, is it, it comes to mind very obvious that what if we block VEGF? Uh, this should be uh, drugs confers more sensi dr sensitivity. So, and yes, blocking VEGF is uh, associated with sensitivity. It's a drug combo. So now the, the main topic of the hypothesis-driven drug discovery. So based on the previous dream cha uh, challenge uh, hypothesis, that combination of similarity and dissimilarity in compound activity leads to synergy. So we try to expand this hypothesis uh, at the target level and for the set of essential cancer pathway with respect to drug response. So how do we do this? We just take the interaction matrix and then for each, for two drug targets, to find the correlation across the different progeny pathway. 
And this correlation is basically the function of similarity of, for instance, the protein EGFR and AKT1. And based on this correlation, we have different mechanisms of synergy. For instance, synergy by similarity, when the correlation is close to one, we, we do a strong hit on the same pathway. And all synergy uh, by dissimilarity, when it's close to minus one, it's a synergy can occur by compensation of each other's escape mechanism because they are anti-correlated. So it's perfect scenario for this. So now let's check if the drug synergy affects synergy. So we take the, all the drug targets in common between the two data sets, and then we plot for each target pairs the average synergy of the top three drug combination set line against the similarity of this target. And we observe very interesting finding is that and when it's close to one, when the similarity is close to one or minus one, there's increased uh, synergy, where there are more pairs that are synergistic. So that's how we base the first workflow, the compound prioritization workflow, is that we compute the progeny scores, and then we run the interaction with those pathway with the drug target, and then based on the correlation of this, this, this functional similarity, we define a sort of a compound prioritization workflow, so to prioritize new compound. And then in the second time, for those that are, we know that are synergistic, uh, how to stratify them. So when it's close to one, for instance, targeting the same pathway, we just, uh, we, 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 we just use the pathway context to predict the synergy. For instance, uh, in which situation the, the both drugs effect are maximized. So since they are targeting the same pathway, it's a strong hit. So we just use the pathway that confer your uh, sensitivity minus pathway confirmed resistance. And in the different scenario, when they scroll to minus one, it's like it's the situation of the resistance. So how does this happen? It's because when two drugs are individually ineffective, combining them sometimes provide more synergy because there's more room for synergy. So that's the second scenario. And we just use top resistant pathway minus top sensitive pathway using a progeny score. And yes, this has been validated to uh, on seven target pairs and also validated on uh, one target pairs uh, about correct cell line with predictive performance 0 0.7 and 0 0.4, which is quite good considering that we're predicting for new drugs on new cell line. So to sum up, so we have two workflows, so one for uh, compound prioritization and one for stratification of the, the cell line. And the main point is that we, we use machine learning as a hypothesis generation tool, and then we build individual model based on the hypothesis. So yeah, with this, thanks for your attention. <laughs>